Sports. Uh, today we bring a little bit of surprise. I have this uh, white, Al Alpine white, the 46 M3. Um, this one I've already done uh, some work to it in the past. This is before I actually started my, uh, my YouTube channel. Um, we'll go through a couple, uh, I'll add a couple pictures so you can see what's been done. And pretty much anything from the, from the rear subframe, uh, that's what I end up doing. So looks brand new, beautiful underneath. Uh, Mike, which is behind the camera, um, this is his car. And uh, we're just gonna give it a little, little bit more extra love. So uh, our plan for today, um, Christmas came early, so uh, we plan on doing uh, something that's going to be here underneath the engine bay, or the engine itself, the hood, and uh, let's go take a peek and uh, see what uh, old Santa Claus brought us. Alright, so uh, here we go, um, CSL intake, and what a beauty, a lot of carbon fiber bits, uh, so we got the snorkel here on this end, and this is the Carbonius uh, with the new updated um, uh, rings here for the intake and then we also have the uh, the carbon fiber uh, valve cover and then um, Mike um, Mike is one of those guys that researches and researches and researches and then when he thinks he's done researching he researches some more so Mike is I would probably say it on the research side he probably knows more about it than what I do unfortunately I might have the mechanical skills to be able to install it better than him but um, in calibrate in calibrating in calibration together we were able to figure it out but um, as I stated he has gone through everything and this is what uh, Mike chose to pick so what we end up having for the ECM and this is the route he went with the castle performance um, and this is a uh, reflashed it's not a um, in, in a tune Right? Is that correct, Mike? NHL? Yeah, so it would be technically there's CSL flashes on there. It's correct. like the Euro CSL flash. So we have a bunch of bits here. We have all of the clamps, which unfortunately, <laughs> knowing that I work on BMWs a lot, I do not have this clamp. So we will try to figure that out. Um, we have the pigtail here that he uh, also has. Um, yeah, that's the Turner Motorsport um, uh, IAT relocation, which... Yep makes the IAT install kind of a lot easier rather than making up your own. So I have these for making your own IAT harness, um, but uh, we're gonna use the Turner one because it makes it a little a little quicker to yep. install. And then we also have uh, two of the I, IAT sensors. Uh, one is Euro and the other one is American spec. So we're gonna go with American spec. And this is the part, to be honest with you, I just, when you look at something this beautiful, uh, it really, really, really hurts to drill a hole in any of this, and uh, um, I will shed a tear when I do this, but it is for the good or the great. So we're gonna go ahead and get that done, and uh, it would only hurt for a little bit. So, but uh, it's gonna run cooler, Ed. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so that was that was the thing. Sometimes you have to do it, but it just when you have something like this, sometimes it's just hard having to modify something because you know it's masterpiece so what we're gonna end up doing is gonna grab I got pretty much my tool set up and we're just gonna jump in and what we're gonna do is just a quick disassemble um, this should be easy it's not an SMG one so just taking the air filter um, section off that's gonna access a lot of the stuff underneath and I'll just start ripping everything apart and then what we'll do is we'll um, just cut back into when we start pre-assembling some of this uh, like I stated earlier these clamps I just got to figure something out um, and, but we'll go from there. No matter what, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, then, you know, hose clamps is, that's how I got both my uh, cars running with hose clamps because I could always take them off and reuse them. Um, as long as you clock the hose clamps correctly, <sighs> I thought I did, but that was giving me a code on one of my cars that I, I swore up and down, it's done. It, I did it correctly. And once I had somebody hit on the throttle, it just it barely hit enough to where it threw the TPS sensor off and it gave me the cold. But clocked it, which works fine. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get going on the uh, on the breakdown. So, um, what I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna go through what I'm gonna do is, uh, firstly, I'm gonna uh, remove the strut tower bar here. I'm gonna remove the air filter, um, the cabin air filter, and then this section here has just got uh, four uh, Torx bit uh, screws back there. You know, remove the uh, power cable and stuff and just leave that laying there, disconnect this, and then we'll pick up from there. These should be very simple and easy, and anybody should be able to do that. Um, 
what it boils down to is once we get those items, then I'll start taking the intake and start taking the airflow, disconnecting that stuff. Um, and then what we'll do is, um, I don't know, we'll kill him froggy. I don't know if we're just gonna film the whole thing and just fast forward everything, but uh, I'm just gonna go in and start knocking around. my knuckle and if I keep hitting it it's not gonna heal three minutes in I'm already crying got the air box out pretty much like, like I stated earlier so the next step is we're gonna have to move underneath um, so we got the uh, purge assembly here that we got to just uh, slide off and then uh, we start having the uh, the tougher parts where room is is where we all wish there was more room so we got to disconnect this piece here and um then we have the line that i normally disconnect that's underneath the intake box and um and that pretty much after removing the two bolts on the bracket for the bracket the stabilizer bar i guess for the intake and uh, then we can start working on the um, on the clamps themselves So the dipstick will get on away a little bit. Um, I'm probably just to save myself a little bit of time, I'm probably just going to try to loosen it and get it out of the way. Yeah, some guys are saying we can actually um, turn it in its place and it, we don't have to do any bends on it. So I guess we'll see if we can get it that see way. If we do yeah. it that way. All right, so next is, I already got pretty much almost everything except for one line, which is the small line that goes to the oil pan underneath, disconnected. Um, that one technically is very hard to get your hand in there and disconnect it. So that will come off once I have it loose and then I can kind of tip it forward and then I can get my hand underneath and disconnect it. So the next step is to remove all the clamps uh, for, uh, for the intakes. Gosh, dang it. Ouch, ouch, ouch. This is one part that I, I, I miss my my office job. I never did that. I uh, almost took out a finger, but got it. Forgot to mention earlier, we did disconnect the battery. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna end up doing is just removing the, the power from here and taking the uh, injector harness um, from the uh, electrical box here. That way I could have this completely open. So no matter what, I had to open the electrical box to be able to go and do some wiring on it. So uh, might as well go ahead and get that done now. Like I stated, this thing is pretty much, it's already off. I just, I, I cannot get that clip to uh, to release from the, uh, for the oil pan uh, drain tube. So I'll get, I'll get to that. doing it just kind of you know we got it off uh, looking at some stuff um, see if there's anything out of the ordinary that we didn't know was going on that we could technically get to now um, so everything seems to be good there's no excessive oil anywhere uh, one of the main things is making sure that we don't have any oil leaks back over here on the oil filter housing everything looks good normal this is good it's like I got got a good car here yeah all right so now what we've got to do is start uh, getting everything assembled um, on the CSO intake. And uh, what we're going to try to do now is start doing some pre-wiring, trying to lay down some of the wiring where it's going to go and kind of just do a test fitment of the box just to, to make sure um, we're all on the same fit. So the master flow sensor uh, will be connected here in this lot. So I am uh, releasing or removing the 10 millimeter bolt here and a 10 millimeter bolt, you know, and uh, that's just gonna give me the opportunity to uh, pop them off the slots here. And then we'll put on the, um, ah, let's do it back at the table. Um, put the master, uh, the map sensor here in this spot and uh, put this back together, laying the wire in there. 
and then we're going to test fit everything to make sure where the what would be the best clean location to to run or the routing uh, to run the wires. Um, all I end up doing is to, to remove the rails. I just put a screwdriver right here and put it right underneath here and kind of just barely jiggled it. Uh, they both have O-rings, so it is either going to come up from the top or the bottom, whichever which way. Um, so it's very simple. You don't even have to disconnect the, uh, the vacuum line in the back. And so this is the orientation of the, uh, the sensor itself. Um, so we're gonna put it in this way and it goes in the uh, throttle body number deuce, number two. And you can tell it's got a little slot there for that. So just to let you know, what I end up doing is I sprayed a little WD-40 on my fingers and I just went around the O-rings and the master one so it goes on smoothly. So I do not rip the O-rings because we do not want that to happen. So. And that's it. It just makes the insulation so much more easier. And I can go ahead and get my screw in there. That's pretty easy. So the best thing is just to look to make sure all of them are right in the hole. And uh, smack them down. That's it. Now here it comes a uh, uh, post 04 per 04. So this is an 03, the one we're dealing with. So this one is um, has the rings around it, which these actually, if you look here, these spin on. Okay, so if you ever have to take them off, you could actually spin the boot off once you get the clamps off. So we were able to use the boots from uh, pre 04. Um, because of the inlets themselves, which will match up with the carbon fiber one. So if you have a post 04 from 04, 05, you will probably have to purchase one of these to get the boots that you need. Or if you would just wanna buy new ones, which they are running around 35 bucks per boot. Um, so that's one thing you have to think about is what year, your, what year model your car is and if you're gonna need these boots. Um, because the ones you have on there may not work. So just a little tidbit of information that we just ran into. So, uh, so yeah, neat. And I actually, if you look, this is one of my old throttle bodies that I have. Um, this is from, I wanna say this one is an old one engine that I have throttle bodies. And you can see that this one looks like it'll fit on this one. So it kind of gives you a, thin, uh, a notion that that's where uh, things are gonna go. So, um, Sweet, we're gonna put the clamps on and then we're gonna start finish uh, the install. All right guys, so we did a little bit of uh, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. Uh, we were messing with the dipstick and we were trying to come up with the grid option. And so what we ended up doing is um, we didn't do any bending uh, to the dipstick itself. So all I ended up doing was um, just releasing it, taking it out, and what I end up doing is I ran it behind the wiring harness here and, and it's technically barely touching the heater hose and it's barely touching the actual plug itself. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it, we're gonna keep an eye on it and uh, there's hardly any movement in it. And the best part of it all is it's on rubber mount. So we feel that it, it'll give it a little bit of leeway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it like this. Um, and see what happens, and we're gonna keep an eye on those uh, those two places right there. Um, luckily for Mike, lives right down the street from me, so uh, you know I'm sure he'll not come knocking on my door and be like, "Hey, we gotta fix this." So um, so win win. We didn't have to bend it, and uh, it's just a matter of it took us about I don't know I want to say 30 minutes of moving and taking off and putting back on, and I really didn't want to bend the dipstick because I was afraid that uh, it would crack. Um, or split, so uh, it was a yeah. good option for us. A good option for and us. We don't have a replacement, and I, I really didn't want to run the CSL um, dipstick because to check the oil level, even though the CSL has the electronic uh, indicator, you have to take off that half, you know, half that intake there, yeah. just to check the oil level on the yeah. dipstick. So, so awesome. sweet. So next thing what we're gonna do is uh, start installing it. Everything else seemed to fit correctly so what we got is we got the sensor already plugged in and i zip tied it here to the coolant uh pipe and got it right here as well to another section and then went behind the um 
which I think that is, yes, that's the vacuum line going to the uh, fuel pressure regulator. Uh, so we zip tied it back here. Getting it out of the way, because technically the wire will be running and going into this section right here. So we got plenty of room uh, to do all that. So um, just wanted to show you how we end up uh, uh, routing that wire through to make sure it's not in the way or doesn't bind up or anything of that sort. So, all right. What we've got is she's situated in. Uh, the two screws for the brackets are tightened, or the two uh, nuts. Um, I already clipped on the uh, the the tube. The I forget what section is for, for that. Oh, for the um, idle control valve, uh, that's connected. Uh, so is that that uh, small little line that goes to the back side, out underneath that goes to the oil pan. That's been done as well. And uh, we just ended up adding the solenoid and put it into the bracket to. It's very, very tight. It's literally right here. I don't know if you could end up seeing there's a bracket. It is a, I should have sprayed a little, little WD-40 on it, but I, I thought it would slide in so much more easier. But we finally got that in. Um, so all underneath here is taken care of and done. It is tightened. So we got our clamp, clamps in place and uh, we'll be uh, ready to clamp those suckers down. Um, hopefully, um, I'm able to do it with just my regular uh, pliers that I took them off with. Um, this will be technically the first time that I reuse these because normally I just get rid of them and use hose clamps because it's so much more easier to do them with hose clamps. Uh, but this is such a cleaner look this way. So um, we'll get these going. As you can see, we got the sensor already here. It's a tight little fit, but um, that's all the room that we've got. And so far, so good. So we're uh, plugging away. Once we get these uh, clamps in uh, tightened, and then we'll go ahead and put the filter, put the housing in, and then we'll do the snorkel. Now I wanna show you something real quick, is you know the items that Mike chose. So here is the, the stock location or the location that they put for the European uh, air intake uh, temperature sensor. So that's where that goes. Unfortunately, we're just gonna put it in place and it's not gonna get connected. As we stated earlier, we have the US one that's gonna go in a snorkel. So we'll draw that, that through, but this will stay here um and it will just stay empty so uh we'll keep plugging away all right so um the <laughs> these these clamps were a, a two-man job for mike and i these ones right here uh we skipped a step um I, like i stated earlier this was the first time i've actually used or reused these clamps so uh, I didn't know they clipped into place and you could just have them almost close to their size. So we took a little bit of time trying to get that uh, clipped into place. But once we got them done, it was just a matter of positioning the pliers correctly to snap them in place. So a lesson well learned uh, for the next one, which uh, it might be coming up sooner than I expect. I wish it was on my car, but unfortunately it won't be. And um, so we got those done and now we went ahead and installed the, uh, the filter. So we got that in. It's nice and easy so um now it's just a matter of putting it putting this jewel right in here it's always good to try to put these in by hand as much as you can so that way you don't do what mike was trying to do cross them so, so it's easy to go in once you get it in there so so we're just gonna leave that for right now just like that and now we got to work on the snorkel all right folks so uh we got uh the location for the uh, intake air temperature sensor and we did not drill the carbon fiber so there it is in there what we end up doing is we took the fog light ducting that goes to the OEM um, air box and we trimmed down the beveled edge um, probably had to take about three inches off and uh, we're able to get the this the uh, sensor to go through and now that's it gives us enough room to where we put this in there and it physically just lays there snug. So in essence, it still will direct some air to it and uh, further away from the engine, better uh, temperature. So uh, sweet. We didn't have to drill through it. We didn't this have to is, drill. This is good. Cooler temps. All yeah. right. We're running good. Like butter. Wait, man, I'm, I'm not looking so buttery, right? I know. Oh, here's the butter. Bam! That's Ooh, look it. at that. That's money. Yeah, that looks sweet. 
right where we wanted it. That's looking pretty good. At now yep. there is hidden hardware in the bag, so don't throw it away. Yeah, I almost <laughs> threw it away. So. All right, so now what we're going to end up doing is, since we're technically all finalized, we got everything where we need the installation. Now what we we'll do is we'll button a couple more little items, make sure this is good, and we'll go ahead and start finalizing all the wire, which is the. This one we're just gonna cap off. We're not using a map sensor. Uh, so we'll get that resolved. We'll figure out a nice little place to put this so it doesn't hang around or bounce around. And then the other little thing, which is just here is our wire for the map sensor. So, let's see, it's already getting in the way. So we're gonna run it through this. Right now, our plan is to run it through this one. So that way we, there's no issues or anything. It goes through um, its actual slot and then we'll pin it to where it needs to be pinned. So uh, we're gonna finish button up most of the stuff. And, um, oh, we do have to, no, we already did. Or Mike already did, right? You already replaced this? Yeah, we'll say we did. Oh, okay, we, yeah, we did. Um, and um, we just gotta put it on the, on the new one. So uh, stand tight and hopefully on the next frame we'll uh, almost be buttoned up. Um, so we're starting to wire this up and we gotta head ourselves before the camera. So uh, just to give you an idea, we have uh, three wires and these are the ones that are for from the map sensor, uh, which is located on the intake uh, right next to the second uh, individual throttle body. So we're running them through here. As you can see um, right here, we uh, kind of got to there. I split it and ran it through there. I kind of took a little bit of the uh, rubber away so I could uh, make sure I could have enough room to run the, uh, the small wires through there. And same thing with this one. Uh, this plug right here is actually, I'll take it out real quick. It's actually easy uh, to get it in. There's a lot of flexibility right here. And uh, you're gonna love this. I uh, sprayed a little WD-40 and she slid right on in. So again, WD-40, man, it's works wonders. So, um, so I just put this sucker right back in here, right in its slot. Let me get my head turning right, my light. So we go see there. And then that's technically done. And then we're back to the pins. So I'm gonna start with the one, the ones that already come pre-pinned. It's gonna be 16 and 18. 16, which is brown with an orange, that's pin 16. So you just insert it into that one. And then we have the solid yellow wire that goes in pin 18, just slides right in. Just in case you know, you have your numbers located right here. So this one is 26 and it goes down to 14. So 16 and 18 for these two. And then what you do is you turn it over. And again, you have your numbers. There's 13 and it goes down 12, 11, blah, 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 down to one. So this one is pin seven. So they provided this little, little puppy here, um, which what we're going to do instead of cutting, splicing or anything, we're just gonna tap into it. And um, he had a good idea. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a heat shrink over this once we get this on there. And that way it'll be completely heat, completely heat shrinked and uh, free of any issues, any grounds, or any spark down the road and fire. So we're gonna get that going, so um, we'll get to it. I, I did fail to mention um, to try to get this out of here. So um, it's real simple. This little tab right here. Um, all you have to end up doing is just technically prying out, which you'll get it right here. Once it's in here. And as you can see, that's the clip. So that's how it stays in place. All you have to do is just get a small little pick, pry it right there. And all you have to do is just put it in there and it slides right on out. So let me go ahead and get my heat shrink on. I do have uh, my heat gun, but I will not use it because it's way over there. Getting lazy. I'm getting lazy. So I'm going to go old school. Wow. I don't, I'm surprised I don't even have one of these. Just ah, my darn fan. Just uh, melting, melting my ECU in the process here. Sometimes we go old school, super old school. Well, actually, old school, we wouldn't even use this stuff. So, easy peasy just to put this sucker back in. Watch it, she is still hot. Slides right in. 
So what we ended up doing in the interim, we also went ahead and swapped out the ECM. So this, our DME, this is the uh, the new Castle uh, Flash DCM. So um, uh, Michael did get a couple of little extra items uh, or options added or removed. So um, let's get going. This spot, what I'm thinking um, is to house and hold, I'll get that tightened, uh, these in place from the OEM one. Well, because we don't have anything to drill a hole or we were gonna, I can use a P-clamp, which I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the extra mile for you, Mike. Wow. I'm gonna grab one of my fantastic P-clamps and I'm gonna use that. So stay tight while I grab the P-clamp in my little Got it. hole. So what he's talking about here is there's a little hole on the side of the intake. Um, and so what we're trying to do is just kind of block that off just so, because that, that hole basically sits right behind the, uh, right behind the filter so you don't have any unfiltered air kind of dropping in. So what we've decided to do is before we button everything up, swap out the beautiful valve cover for another beautiful valve cover. She fit pretty good. These guys don't mess around when it comes to fitment. Stuff is pretty much perfect. All right, so we got uh, pretty much everything buttoned up so we can get everything uh, a go, make sure everything is running smoothly, make sure she starts, make sure she runs. This is the moment of truth right here. So let's uh let's start her up. gonna be no big ripping or anything like that. I'm in my neighborhood. HOA will not like that. So my plan is to get this car, you know, dyno tuned once I get everything sort of buttoned up on it. So I think this was kind of the last step. Definitely some roughness down low. Give you a little taste right here. Gonna be making some bad decisions, I think. Man, I just I can't right now. Just to have this CSL box in my track car, oh my goodness. Oh, that sound on low, low yeah, end. That is pretty uh, incredible. I'm not sure if it's translating on video because I mean I've watched no. literally every video on this intake and it doesn't sound like no, this. It definitely is a different sound when you're actually in the car. It just feels like it's just bad. Yeah. And honestly, the exhaust sounds pretty good with it. It's not too, my concern was the exhaust would be too loud it's and you wouldn't kind of, hear. Kind of drying it out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not the case. And it's a loud exhaust. So that says, just shows you how loud this intake is. His exhaust is loud. <laughs> oh, it's loud. Compliment one another now. The guy in front of me is probably not too thrilled with yeah, what I'm doing. It's, it's like...
there's there is that little I want to call it a small hesitation like right around especially in second gear right around 2200 rpms right there but it clears it up right away but yeah and that's something like uh, I was telling you that it's pretty standard on the CSL tune so I'm excited to see kind of once I actually fully tune it kind of what what happens and if that smooths that out but I mean you can't beat the sound Bad, you got to keep hitting the button when you want it on sport mode. We'll take care of that. <laughs> I mean, that is unreal. Yeah. That sound is like you it's sure not. Sure, <laughs> you really want this on your car? I don't know. For a daily driver, I don't know, man. I'm more willing. To swap them out right now. Yeah. And we'll work all through the night. Yeah. No check engine line yet, which is good. Right there, dude. It's just like right around 3,000 RPMs when the Vanos are, uh, I want to say they're retarding to create more torque. The sound just sounds, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. You know, I'm only estimating that that's what it's doing, but it definitely around that 3,000 RPM range. It just sounds more thorough to your life. Some, some magic's some happening. Some magic's happening. And the Vanos <laughs> is included, damn it. It is in there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. That's all that needs to be said. I don't need to eat dinner anymore. I'm, I'm, this I'm is done. it. Yeah, that, that, yeah. All right, Ed. Thoughts? Ideas? What's going on? Yeah, really none of those. It's just more the want. The want. Wow. You know, it's, it's weird when you do a lot of research and you go through and that's what you want, you know. It, it's a totally different animal when you physically have it in person. You see it in person, you drive it. It's, it's amazing. It's, uh, for the money, you know, it's... I mean, I, I want to say it's worth it, but unfortunately, I, this is probably the first time and the last time I get to drive it. So, <laughs> but um, needless to say, uh, it's awesome and uh, it's definitely on one of my uh, to buys list. Uh, so, um, so yeah, definitely, if you guys are able to do it, it's it's amazing. And as you can see, in all honesty, it wasn't that much hard work. The only work that we created ourselves yeah, well, was clamps. these clamps. And, uh, and we just took, um, I don't know, I want to say about 30 minutes trying to decide what we're going to do with a dipstick because A, uh, we really didn't want to bend it because we didn't want to break it and B, we wanted it to make it to where it was nice and solid and uh, you know, C, we didn't want to have to buy a new one. So, uh, so, but it worked out just fine how it was. It's nice and steady uh, and sturdy. So that's a plus. And uh, our little sensor back there the ita sensor mm -hmm. money yeah that so, was a pretty um, good install i'm glad we yeah. didn't have to drill into the Correct. snorkel itself and that was another hard thing that yeah. was going to be able to do is to do that and uh but and all honestly it wasn't really that that bad that hard um we took our time we actually had to go for a drive because we had to get the uh uh the, the tool. pliers the yeah. tools to get that because you know as many as times i've worked and i've seen those like i said i don't reuse them i don't get them i just throw them away and i use hose clamps but it does look cleaner this way yeah definitely um but uh and all honestly i think it took we started at 1 30 yep in the afternoon and we finished at 7 30 7 30 yeah and that was a drive to advance auto a drive to napa and a drive to um, o'reilly's hey if you guys want to sponsor me we're willing to do that um, so to get the tool and um, so we did a little bit of driving time and we messed around a little bit here and there so not bad so if you have everything ready I mean you could probably knock this out in five hours or yeah, so yeah definitely so, but yeah so like always guys like and subscribe to my channel it always helps out I want to keep doing most of these videos I actually do enjoy it and I tell you what it's a little bit more better when you have somebody else filming it's definitely because it's 
I'm not working on it by myself. Yep. So we kind of bounce ideas off and everything. So it's great. And yep. I tell you what, very handy having two people manhandle these things. But we did it incorrectly the first time. That's so, true. Uh, again, thank you for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the next one.